and because their imagination is made alive by this wonderful story, which they can't read, but they can, they can experience by touch. And we were introduced to this marvelous work by um, a, a wonderful group of educationalists uh, based, in, based in Chennai. Now, how is it possible to come to Mumbai and not talk about cricket? I mean, for people of my generation, Sunil Gavaskar, poetry on the cricket pitch when, 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 when in his pomp and batting. And of course, more recently, the great Sachin Tendulkar. Um, it's a shame that Donald Bradman isn't, wasn't alive at the same time. We could have seen who was the greatest batsman ever. Um, uh, but we'll, we'll know. So how is it possible? Well, this is uh, the cricket ground at Worcester, which is, which is uh, considered by many to be the epitome of English cricket because of this view. There's the cricket ground, a first-class match taking place, and there is Worcester Cathedral in the background. Um, what is perhaps not so well known is that Basil D'Oliveira played his professional career at Worcestershire County Cricket Club as well as playing for England. And of course, you will all know that it was the refusal of the South African government to accept Basil D'Oliveira um, uh, because of his color, which led to the sporting boycott of South Africa and which led to so much, and which of course your country played such a wonderful role uh, in, in such a, a progressive and intelligent and determined way. And Basil, um, uh, whose son I've uh, played cricket with and actually faced my last ball uh, ag against him. Uh, sadly, he passed away a few years ago. Um, and his grandson plays for Worcestershire uh, today. But also, perhaps, what, well, not, what is not well known is that Worcestershire is the first county cricket club in England, first-class club, to have um, uh, an England player captain it who was actually born in India. And this is Vikram Solanki, who went on to be chair of the Professional Cricketers Association, born in Udaipur, um, and uh, the first uh, Indian to be the captain of an English county cricket club. Now here is the same picture, the same cricket being played, um, but if you look at the picture on the right hand, you'll notice if you look carefully at this man who's about to catch the ball, that he's only got one arm. And this is a picture that was taken uh, this summer, just gone. Um, and uh, uh, it's the first uh, triangular international tournament to take place in England between uh, England, Bangladesh, and uh, uh, Pakistan um, on uh, physical disability cricket. And I wanted to introduce you to something that we're working on now. Because I told you that the arena was the first uh, facility in England to be purpose designed to include the wheelchair athlete, which is astonishing when you think of the thousands of sports halls which have been created. Well, we're working at a project at the moment with the England Cricket Board to create the world's first inclusive cricket center um, uh, in which people who are blind will also be able to practice um, uh, alongside, albeit divided by, by a wall, um, uh, when they're in the nets, um, alongside people who are sighted, uh, people who are first-class cricketers, children, uh, boys, women, men and girls, um, uh, to will all be there together using the same changing rooms, uh, having the same pleasure and joy. And this is a picture of the, uh, of the teams uh, at the uh, dinner that we hosted for them. Um, and uh, just a, an idea, and of course you will know, I mean here we have blind cricket being played, which of course is um, uh, played with, uh, by hearing and with a soft ball, and you have to wear a blindfold so that, if you, so that everybody has the same level of impairment. And of course India are the holders of the Blind Cricket World Cup, um, and uh, the estimates vary greatly, but it is estimated that there may be up to a million children who have a visual impairment here in India. And of course, with cricket being such a great national popular support, I know that you will want the children, uh, whether they have a visual impairment or not, to be able to enjoy. And this is where we're going to build it. That's the arena. And we've carefully bought um, some land at the back and to the side. And uh, in uh, two years' time, I hope that this will be filled up 
uh, with a, a new uh, center for cricket. Um, we signed off the designs for it, uh, the commission for the architect, uh, 10 days ago. Now this brings me to the main item, which is Dr. Swaroop Sampat Rabha. And uh, here is Swaroop um, and uh, uh, teaching uh, characteristically this theme of getting down onto the same level. Swaroop has led us all to, to this. And here you see a picture of Swaroop uh, with an extra who has been hired for the day, um, uh, you can see. Um, and uh, she's actually the first person in the history of the university um, to have a double, to be a double doctorate. because she earned her PhD 10 years ago with a, a wonderful thesis on uh, all sorts of aspects of inclusive education. And of course, she's been doing great work, which you know um, a, a great deal about and which we're going to um, uh, learn more about today, I'm sure. And we were delighted to give her an honorary degree uh, just a few weeks ago. And this is a picture in the hive, absolutely. Uh, and here is uh, Swaroop addressing uh, uh, the 2,000 people uh, at uh, Worcester Cathedral um, and, uh, and uh, in her honorary doctoral robes. And we've, we've got a fancy gown to have some more pictures later. Uh, I, I feel sure that um, uh, the combination of Swaroop and the fancy gown will attract photography uh, <laughs> in, in, in a great deal. And, and I'll try to be an extra uh, uh, and do my best. Uh, and I brought that gown along as well. Um, and I just want to say that having made this bridge to the uh, work uh, that we're doing with Swaroop, I've got my colleagues here, and Jordan, who's uh, head of education, uh, Pinky Jane, who plays such an important role in our uh, school of education at the university, um, and uh, um, right. Right, well, the minister has timed his arrival brilliantly. <laughs> Sir, it's a pleasure and an honor to meet you. And also, I mean, uh, I, I can see that uh, not only are you doing great work, but you are destined for great things because to make an entry just like that as I'm about to come to the main point that I was trying to make in my speech is fantastic. So thank you, sir. And, 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 and the point that I was going to make is we are launching this diploma today, which uh, Swaroop and colleagues, uh, Anne, Pinky, and others have been working on uh, in education, which is to help teachers learn how to teach using drama and other ways so that children learn uh, critical life skills. And we go back to the idea of character and learning to be resilient in a rather difficult and changing modern world. Um, we think of the resilience that Mark Scriven had to show uh, to be able to win all the records um, and win all the matches that, that he had to win and to live his life when his father had um, hit him so hard at the age of 10 that he lost his sight and had abused him for so many years. And yet he's managed to go on and do such positive work now. And so um, we've... Uh, Swaroop has made uh, a, a short film, or a short film has, made, has been made featuring Swaroop, which I just want to uh, uh, play to you now, and that will really be the introduction to the uh, main course, which is to listen to Swaroop uh, and uh, how she is going to uh, help work with us all to further develop inclusion so important in our modern world. So let's have the film with Swaroop now, and we'll just dim the lights a little and um, there we go. I think children all over the world are the same and they really deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, um, that's, uh, that's the beginnings of a bridge towards Swaroop. Um, and um, I'm just going to ask just a very few brief words to you and then introduce another film, Pinky. First of all, allow me to express my deep, deepest gratitude for this honor the University of Worcester has bestowed on me. I accept it joyfully for myself 
and on the behalf of the teachers and the children I have worked with since the last 15 years. At the same time, I'm delighted to share this moment with all of you who have gathered here and invited by us, for you are friends, some long-standing and some new. There is nothing on earth that is more prized than true friendship, and I'm grateful for the academic friendship that transcends borders and distances, for the friendship that allows us to jointly explore the world in which we live, and for the friendship which allows us to share our successes. Um, there are a few people I would like to thank before I continue my speech, and um, two people who are very dear to me who are not here, but celebrated with me in the Wooster Cathedral, my director of studies, Dr. Philip Chamber, and my external examiner, Dr. Jack Whitehead. I also acknowledge the love and support of my family, without whom I would have never achieved what I have. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Paresh, Anirudh, Aditya, Hema, my whole family. I want to especially thank the University of Worcester for this important distinction. It's a great honor for many reasons. Because it was at Worcester that I started my journey as a teacher. I still remember the day I went there. It was a Sunday and the university was absolutely empty. Not totally, the security was there, but I was sitting there on the steps looking at the rolling Malvern halls, the hills, and thinking, this is home. It was here that I learned a lot. It was here that I learned the importance of education. Education is the point at which we decide whether we love the world enough to assume responsibility for it, and by the same token, save it from ruin, which except for renewal, except for building of capacity to question, to explore, to view the world from other standpoint, it would be inevitable. Education too, is when we decide whether we love our children enough not to expel them from our world and leave them abandoned. It was at Wooster that I learned about the equality of opportunity, the capacity to become different. I learned that there's a lot of reviewing required, using of imagination and taking of responsibility. When I went back home, I felt very alone. I do not wish to imply nobody cared, but I just want to say that in spite of the good intentions of the academics and ministries, children were actually traumatized but by what we call education in modern India. East looks west and west looks east, and yet there's a learning crisis in global education. In spite of education for all, no child left behind, every student succeeds, acts, Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan, millions of children world over still can't read, write, and do basic maths. This learning crisis, instead of shortening the social gap, is increasing it. Children from economically vulnerable backgrounds, social minorities, the girl child, who are already disadvantaged by their circumstances, reach adult adulthood lacking in the most basic life skills. Somebody had to act. And I have a very simple mantra, and that is, if not me, then who? My grandmother used to tell me the story about one day the earth was about to experience darkness for the first time. And the people began to panic and they said, the sun will set and darkness will cover everything. What will happen to us? Darkness became arrogant and wanted to show its might. It set its foot on earth and people began to hide. But in one little hut, very far away in a corner, one little lamp raised its head and proclaimed, I challenge you, darkness. I will be the light for the people. If nothing else, I won't allow you to settle around me. I will establish light around me. Watching this, the other lamps in every hut in the world rose, 
and the world watched in amazement. These little lamps stop darkness from expanding. I believe understanding our motivation, we apply a way to limit or to liberate. Social imagination for me is liberation. Imagination is what allows for empathy, for understanding other people's feelings, to begin a new interaction with the world. Social imagination allows us to envision life different from the one which we live. There is one beautiful story I read while I was doing my research. It's about a little boy and his, and his father. They got into the train, a little like our local trains, and there was absolutely no place in there. Somehow the father got the guy, little kid to sit down, gave him a paper and a pen and said, draw. This little kid looked around and after a moment, he started drawing. And after a bit, the father asked him, what are you drawing? So he says, Dad, I'm drawing you sitting in the train next to me. So the father said, there is no place on this train. So he says, not this train, the train in my drawing. In my train, there is a place for everyone to sit. But looking after the way Saurabhji is working, I think it has proved it is the way Saurabhji has found to appreciating such type of training of trainers, which is most interesting, may think. But he has to pass that through the teachers, and the teacher is a crucial in each and every way. And I think uh, in a country like India, we have mass education, so it is too difficult students, but in 2009, from right to education, we have adopted inclusive education, which was not here. Open board in Maharashtra, where the student need not go to day-to-day -day school, but he can be at par with other students, as there is a state board, other students, because the number of parents of the special kids approached us, did discuss with Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Madam, Mr. Gayo, David, David, Thank you. 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 Thank you.